Uh, welcome to the third webinar of Sunrise. It is a pleasure to be with you all today. And uh, we are incredibly appreciative of the chance to gather together and share knowledge. The webinar is about a polymer-based coating for textiles and carpets, desired properties and manufacturing process. So during the webinar, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, write in the chat. So then at the end, we can uh, discuss about it. So uh, let's get going with the first speaker. Ilaria uh, Canesi is a chemical engineering with a background on polymer processing and characterization. She is project manager in our and the uh, chemical division of Next Technology Technotecile. She works on proposal writing and managing of funded uh, R&D project and her field uh, of research is on sustainability and circular economy of textile sector. Please, uh, Ilaria, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. Thank you for the nice presentation. I'm going to share my screen. Can you see my screen and present yes. the demo? Okay. So, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ilari Canesi, and I'm going to talk about uh, recycled polymers to be applied in textile, chemical processes, and uh, additives. Okay. So, uh, first, just a few words about us. Next, technology technotestile. We are an Italian research center. We were born in 1972, and we are located in Prato, one of the main textile districts in Europe. Um, MPT is held 60% by companies and 40% by the Ministry of University and Research. And our main activities are related to providing services to companies in order to uh, improve their competitiveness both at product and process level. Our main interests uh, are in sustainable textile practices uh, and uh, circular economy, not only in the textile sector, but also for packaging, automotive, uh, furniture, and building systems. Uh, we have technologies for textile sorting, thermochemical treatment, mechanical recycling, but also for modification of materials at surface level, like plasma technology. Uh, internally, we have a division for design and mechanical device system and machinery development. And we can also uh, support companies with LCA and measurement of circularity for environmental monitoring. As you can see from the logos, in the right side of the slide from 2011, we lead the uh, OT2020. It is the first kind of fashion cluster which is composed of more than 400 companies. And we have a CEQ laboratory, the center of excellence and quality for the testing and the validation of the products. We are also member of the Big Consortium. In fact, we are involved in proposal writing and project management at different levels, regional, national, and also European. Okay, so uh, in process, what does the textile polymer coating mean? Uh, this is a process uh, used to cover the textile materials uh, with one or more layers of uh, uh, a thermoplastic polymers, uh, polymer or resins. Uh, the coatings uh, could be applied at the yarn level or onto directly the fabric. And uh, could be applied to one or both sides of the fabric, depending on the use and the desired performance. In fact, we can say that the goal of textile coatings is to change, to enhance, or improve material properties, for instance, by extending their useful life, preserving their aesthetic appearance and characteristics. Um, polymer coating can offer different properties uh, to the coated textile, uh, as you can see from the list. Uh, we can say that for conventional and technical application, uh, one of the primary benefits of using coating fabrics uh, 
is uh, uh, increased durability, but also weathering. They are critical factors, uh, for instance, for outdoor products. And uh, thinking about breathability and comfort of garments or textile in general, uh, they are related to impermeability and water repellents. Uh, and all these features uh, are generally due to uh, a proper coating layer. Um, we have to say that usually to obtain these properties, uh, uh, coatings have to be added with specific additives. Uh, they can be, for instance, uh, softeners, uh, preserving agents, uh, hydrophobic agents, uh, fillers, pigments, uh, flame retardant agents. Uh, and for instance, uh, for flame retardant uh, retard, uh, resistant agents uh, can be combined with polymer coating to obtain protective clothing for, for fighters or fabric used in vehicles uh, and uh, airplanes or also for carpeting. And uh, so we can uh, obtain uh, fire heat protection uh, uh, of the coated textiles. Um, speaking about uh, uh, the properties on the right side of the screen, electromagnetic wave shielding, uh, thermo uh, and electrochromism, uh, anti-stacity, these are examples of properties that could be required, for instance, in small textiles and uh, in field in which uh, the um, right up performance uh, are needed. Um, the table here shows uh, some examples of materials used in traditional textile coatings. Um, we can speak about PVC. Uh, coated fabric, uh, PVC coated fabrics uh, are a uh, popular uh, form of coated fabric, uh, which uh, involves uh, the addition of plasticizers uh, to form a flexible coating. So these kind of coatings can offer flexibility uh, enhance the uh, abrasion resistance ability uh, and also water resistance. And uh, they are also ex excellent in uh, uh, resistance to water penetration, uh, making them perfect for the use in industries like uh, construction. And um, speaking about polyurethane, so they are another example uh, of polymer used in uh, traditional coatings. Uh, to give a soft leather-like uh, handle to the fabrics, uh, and they are also commonly used uh, for outdoor products, like the pens, uh, backpacks, uh, because they are um, taken off uh, to the uh, resulting product uh, softness, uh, also lightweight uh, and waterproof uh, and breathable features. Um, we can speak also about uh, acrylic based polymers. Uh, they are commonly used for a large number of textile coatings, um, especially in the field of the soft furnishing and uh, upholstery. Um, they can offer a superior performance in terms of tear strength, durability, resistance to, uh, for instance, UV rays and also water repellency, and they still remain lightweight, and so they are perfect for uh, indoors for equipment. Um, now a brief overview of the coating techniques, uh, just a few examples, because there are a lot of precise co coating techniques, and the choice of the one of another depends uh, on the uh, end use of textile, the required thickness of coating, and also the nature of the coating compound and the, the cost of the end product. Um, for speaking about degree penetration of, um, of these techniques uh, are very different in this aspect because uh, the coatings uh, may be applied in two ways. Uh, on the surface of a material, uh, or uh, the coating can impregnate the structure of the fabric. Um, among the, these factors, also dimensional stability must be taken into account, uh, and it is an important factor. Because if material is dimensionally stable, it can be coated uh, using direct coating. Uh, that is, applying the coating directly uh, into the fabric. For non-dimensionally stable fabrics, uh, 
the transfer coating is required and it is a technique that uh, means applying the coating onto a release medium and then transfer the layer onto the fabric. Um, as you can see from the image, uh, um, coating uh, is one of the common uh, and easy direct coating techniques in which the fabric is run through a bath of the coating formulation. And in this case, the weight and thickness of the coating are due to line speed, rheology of the liquid, and also the interaction with the fabric. In this, uh, in this case, the thickness is not uh, properly controlled. Um, and so the coated fabric uh, may be subjected to uh, the squeezing or scraping uh, to decrease the, the coating itself of the, uh, the finish. Um, if we want uh, to uh, set the coating thickness, uh, uh, there are other common techniques, uh, and two of them are roll coating uh, or, and uh, knife or blade uh, coating. Um, here are some examples of roll coatings. Um, the simple one is kiss roll technique, and it involves uh, the use of uh, a single roll to bring the coating material up from the tank to touch the fabric. And uh, the amount of the liquid uh, in this case is controlled by the liquid rheology, the line speed, and fabric geometry. And, uh, in this case, uh, the coating thickness can be decreased using uh, a road or a knife uh, in sperm the application, like in uh, uh, deep uh, uh, coating. Um, the second one is a reversal roll coating. Uh, and in this case, uh, the application roller, um, as you can see from the image, rotates in the opposite direction to the fabric. And uh, this is a technique in which the coating thickness is controlled by the gap between the material roll and the application roll. Uh, this, we can say this is a, an equipment that is more expensive than the others because it involves uh, the use of uh, three precision uh, ground rollers. Uh, the last one, um, we can mention the palandin roll coating because it's a technique for very high viscosity, viscosity coatings. And um, in uh, this technique, uh, also the thickness of the coating film is determined by the gap between the calendar rollers. And uh, one characteristic is that the rolls can be heated to keep the coating at the right viscosity, or can be chilled to release uh, the coating onto the fabric. We um, we talk about knife coating. Uh, is a common technique and it, use, uh, it uses uh, different uh, knife or blade profiles uh, depending on the coating and the required amount uh, of penetration of the coating into the substrate. Uh, these are three examples of knife coating. Uh, in uh, the first one, knife over air coating, the coating blade, uh, um, as you can see, has contact with the fabric in an area with no direct fabric support. So the coating can penetrate into the fabric and the thickness depends on the deflection of the fabric. In, um, in the second one, the knife overall coating, uh, and we can use this, this technique uh, if uh, the coating is required to go on the surface of a textile because uh, it simply means that the coating is applied with the blade directly over a roll. And uh, the thickness of the coating is controlled by a gap uh, between the knife and the fabric. And the last technique uh, is that is similar to knife over roll. Um, a simple jet of bear is used to control the coating thickness. We can also mention two other techniques uh, that are called exact coating techniques. Um, uh, for instance, leg coating or extrusion coating. Uh, um, in this technique, the exact amount of polymer coating is extruded directly onto the fabric. Uh, for transfer coating, as I said before, uh, the specific thickness of a coating material is uh, Preformed onto a release sheet to form a film. 
and then the coating transfer to the fabric uh, and then the release sheet is removed. Um, we can also say that uh, uh, the service substrate, uh, the release sheet uh, is uh, usually covered with materials that are of uh, poor adhesion, such uh, as the silicones or, or waxes to facilitate the film separation. Uh, we had an overview on uh, um, polymers for traditional textile coating and uh, um, processes, but now I want to focus your attention on um, a key point to explain the importance of using recycled polymer in textile coatings. Um, as you can see in this slide, uh, uh, in the uh, European Union, the consumption of textile has the, the fourth highest negative impact on the environment and on climate change. According to a communication of the European Commission of last year, the global consumption of clothing and footwear is expected to increase uh, up to 60% by 2030. And as you can see from the image uh, in the report of McKinsey in 2020, in the top five sectors uh, with the highest plastic, plastic consumption, uh, which accounted for 90% of the global volume of plastic demand, we have textile field. Um, in particular, nowadays, uh, the thermoplastic polymer based waste uh, are usually recycled into the uh, production of novel fibers, but uh, uh, we can have a positive impact on the development, development of more sustainable coating products. Because in this scenario, uh, about possible sustainable solution uh, that are in line with the principle of circular, of circular economy, the Recycling of plastic waste uh, uh, can take a great place uh, in the textile field. Um, one of the main issues of textile sector is in fact related to traditional textile finishing, uh, for which uh, there is a massive use of harmful materials and also new feedstocks. So, research fields and companies are uh, uh, increasingly focusing on the development of new products. Uh, to obtain uh, uh, alternatives that are sustainable uh, to the traditional polymer-based textile coating. Uh, so here we have two samples of commercial products developed from recycled polymers. In the first one, a Dutch group last year developed the sustainable alternative to PVC coated fabrics. Mm, the PVC coated fabrics uh, have uh, great versatility and low price, uh, and uh, these characteristics uh, make them the most popular solution for a wide range of applications, as we said before. But the main drawbacks uh, are that these coatings have toxic and harmful plasticizers, which are released over the life of the fabric. Uh, and also, PVC coated fabrics are usually disposed in landfill and burned. And, and so it has an impact on the environment. Uh, this uh, new developed solution is a non-toxic and recyclable alternative, and is made from a single recycled polymer, the polypropylene, without the use of plasticizer. Um, the final product uh, uh, shows to be to 40% lighter than PVC coated fabrics, uh, with good mechanical performance, good welding strength, uh, uh, abrasion resistance, and also high UV resistance. And it also shows to, to, to have a competitive price. In the second case, uh, um, this is a German group that has developed the textile um, finishing product uh, made out of uh, recycled PET flakes coming from post-consumed PET bottles. And uh, the most important aspect is that the product is suitable for finishing recycled yarns and fabrics. Uh, and so the final product, uh, the final coated product can be recycled uh, again. And this novel coating gives a performance uh, as a moisture management uh, 
thermal regulation uh, that make it suitable for uh, functional textiles uh, as high quality and uh, durable sportswear, for instance, but, uh, they also mentioned other areas of application as uh, uh, filtration media and non oven uh, in uh, technical textiles and also home textiles. Um, also, the research field uh, is starting to investigate the use of uh, recycled uh, plastic uh, into textile coating. And uh, this is an example of a recent uh, study, uh, and it studied the recycled polystyrene um, from food containers uh, and packaging uh, was uh, considered to uh, develop a novel, low cost, and super hydrophobic material for different applications. Being uh, combined the polysome with the sil silicon dioxide nanospheres, a uh, solution in which 100% uh, cotton fabric was uh, immersed with the, the deep coating method. And this thing is the super hydrophobic and super hydrophobic. Uh, coated textiles, taking also advantage uh, from the uh, hydrophobic nature of the plastic. And uh, the coated textile shows an excellent resistance towards uh, the harsher environments, uh, such as corrosive solutions, uh, high temperature treatment, uh, and also mechanical abrasion. And so it uh, could be used for, for instance, for the um, wastewater remediation, for selective oil water separation, but also uh, as a self cleaning fabric for cloth industry. Uh, this is uh, uh, another recent research uh, that uh, investigates uh, the uh, application of. Uh, recycled the polyvinyl butyrate polymer in textile coatings. Uh, in fact, the PVB is a polymer used as a um, safety interlayer in glass due to its optical transparency and mainly in uh, tar windshields. And nowadays, uh, there is a, a wide availability of this uh, recycled PVB thanks to uh, regulations uh, that require a uh, recycling of cars uh, after the and so the challenge uh, is to reuse PVB in different fields. And uh, in this study, the developed uh, recycled PVB basic coatings uh, were applied onto polyester and polyamide yarns. And then the coated yarns show the enhanced properties towards abrasion and chemical resistance. Uh, it's important to mention that uh, the recycling and reuse, the, the efficient recycling and reuse of PVB polymer is also the topic of our project Sunrise, which aims at the uh, optimization of a circular economy approach to PVB sourcing, recycling, and reuse in high quality products. Um, I want to uh, mention briefly also that in parallel with studies aimed at the development of uh, sustainable solutions with uh, recycled polymers, um, the European Union is promoting research uh, on sustainable renewable solutions so with bio-based products. And in this case, the district project, ProPlanet and Tornado, are examples of Horizon Europe-funded projects and entity is part of the Tornado project. And one of the uh, objectives of these projects uh, is to substitute the existing textile coatings containing PFAS. Uh, the PFAS are a group of chemicals that are used to obtain uh, in traditional coatings high performance as they can resist to heat, oil, uh, and water, uh, and uh, for instance, uh, stains. And so the main issue is that they are toxic and harmful, harmful for uh, humans, animals, uh, and the environment. So both projects uh, uh, follow safe and sustainable by design criteria, and both aim to develop high-performance, sustainable, and bio-based coatings with uh, mm, hydrophobic, uh, oleophobic properties, uh, anti-corrosion protection, anti-soiling, uh, anti-refracting properties, 
methods uh, uh, to be uh, valid uh, substitutes uh, for PFAS. To conclude, uh, we can say that uh, in the textile industries, uh, um, there has always been a need to improve the performance of textile materials uh, and the textile coating method can be a valid solution to achieve this desired performance. And uh, traditional textile polymer-based coatings are made of harmful materials, so they can really they, they can be released in the environment and are usually produced with virgin materials. And moreover, the production and consumption of textile products continue to grow nowadays, and so does their impact on climate, environment, and also energy consumption. So new regulations and also our increasing awareness are leading to development of more sustainable solutions. And we need to employ other materials that must be safe, recyclable, and also compatible. Uh, also, with the European Green Deal give us the responsibility to make the growth sustainable, and also according to the principle of circular economy. And the use of recycled polymers to develop polymer-based coatings for textile is a solution and must be still investigated deeply. These are our contacts of the uh, NTT team. So please, if you have any further um, requests from us, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ilaria, for the nice presentation. Um, there is a, I can see a question in the chat, uh, that is, what should be the average porosity of the fabric if we need one side coating? Using a knife coating, can you please answer this question? It's in the chat. Okay, yes, I, I don't have the, the the right answer right now in terms of value, but uh, uh, yes, if they need uh, more specific info, we can uh, have a talk about this because right now I don't have the uh, specific uh, answer to this question. Okay, thank you so much. And now we can move to the... Uh, next speaker, uh, Simona Frankina. Uh, she is a textile expert uh, since 1997 working in the textile sector. Uh, first as a designer of many categories of uh, fabrics and then following the entire production cycle. From fibers to textile, finishing for a historic Italian wool and uh, felting meat. For six months, she has been uh, working for uh, Radici as head of research and development, focusing on the eco design and sustainability of Radici products. Please, uh, Simona, the floor is yours. Thanks for the nice presentation and good afternoon to everybody. Um, just uh, let me say some words about Radici. Uh, Radici Pietro Industries and Brands is a company active in the uh, high hand and luxury textile flooring sector, specializing in the production and distribution of high tech, high -tech textile coverings, both woven and non-woven, with a high degree of customization and artificial turf for sports and decorative use. Based in uh, Cazzano Sant'Andrea near Bergamo, the company has been active in the textile sector since, since the 1950s, uh, the year in which uh, Pietro Radici founded uh, the textile company, Fondazione Filatura di Cazzano Sant'Andrea, dedicated to the production of carpet for large scale distri distribution, and which has experiences, a uh, process of growth and diversification in the following, following years. Radici is today one of the leading international players. It operates in textile flooring market through two production units in Italy and Hungary, two commercial branches in the USA, Poland, and an Italian company active in the design, construction, installation, and maintenance of synthetic turf system. 
with over 2,000 customers, Radici has a consolidated presence in more than 90 countries around the world. And uh, now uh, I will start to explain in a brief uh, presentation, which is the history of the carpet. We've been uh, decorating our homes with carpet uh, since uh, nomadic Middle Eastern tribes laid it down in their huts 2,500 years ago. The hairless people covered the floors uh, of their dwellings with animal skin, grass later, or woven reeds mats. When people learn how to spin cotton and wool, woven mats of these materials largely replaced earlier coverings. Uh, as we can see, uh, uh, sorry, can you go back? <laughs> as we can see, uh, fiber is the basic material that carpet is made up of. Starting carpets were made uh, with natural fibers, most common wool, but also cotton and silk. Today, over 90% of all the carpets are made up of a synthetic fiber because of the lower cost and dark performances. The most common synthetic fiber used in carpet production are usually made up of one of three materials, nylon, polypropylene, or polyester. We can obtain thread from fiber in many different ways. It depends on the type of the fiber used. Natural threads are made up of fibers that are obtained from plants, animals, or minerals. The process of making natural threads is generally called spinning. We can do a brief, uh, a brief overview of how some uh, common natural threads are made. Cotton fibers as, uh, are obtained from the seed spots of the cotton plants. After harvesting, the cotton fibers are separated from the seeds and other impurities using a process called ginning. The cleaned cotton fibers are then carded, which involves separating and straightening the fibers to prepare them for the spinning. The carded fibers are then spun into yarns using a spinning wheel or spindle. Uh, in the second image, we can see silk fibers that are obtained from the cocoons of silkworms. The cocoons are boiled to kill the silkworm and loosen the fiber. The fibers are then unwound in from the cocoons and twist together to form silk threads. And now we see the last one, the wool, wool fiber. Uh, we can um, go to the next slide, please. Wool fibers, um, as you can see in the slide, are obtained from the fleece of the sheep and other animals, such as alpacas, llamas, or goats. After shearing, the wool is washed to the move dirt and grease. The cleaned wool is then carded and spun into yarn using a spinning wheel or spindle. This process is similar to the cotton one. Synthetic fibers are very, it's a very different process to obtain threads from them. Synthetic threads are made up of man-made fibers which are engineered to provide spe specific attributes like strength and luster. The process of making synthetic threads involves melting polymer chips or granules and feeding them under pressure through a device called a spinneret, which is a metal disc containing holes. The molten polymer is, is extruded through the spinneret to form continuous filaments. These filaments are then cooled and collected together to form a continuous filament yarn. The diameter of the filaments is determined by the size of the holes in the spinneret and the pressure of the pump. Almost 75% of carpet today is made of nylon and compared to the other fibers, it performs the best overall. Nylon is the leader in apparent retention, fade and heat resistance, soil and stain resistance, color and styling. Um, in the past, carpets were made only by hand, not in different type of yarn to basic threads. Depending on the, of, on the different origins, there are several styles of knotting. But the two main types of knot are the symmetrical one, 
and asymmetrical one. Today, only few and expensive carpets still be handmade. The most of them is produced in an industrial way. We can produce woven carpets with a loom quite similar to the one used to produce fabric, or we can do tuft carpet made with pile injected into a baking material called primary. We can also have a flat woven production made by hooking wool or cotton through the meshes of a sturdy fabric. Weaving was the produ production process of choice for carpet until the 1950s, 1950s uh, when advances in machinery and the introduction of synthetic material began the era of tufted carpets. Today, most carpet suppliers still carry woven carpets as an option due to their ex exceptional quality and durability. This is especially true of woven carpets using natural materials such as 100% wool or wool blends. The quality and the purity of the wool are important factors influencing the long-term appearance and durability of the carpet. The plush appearance of woven carpets make them ideal for high-end projects where a luxury look and feel is required. The process of weaving carpet using an industrial loom is a complex one that involves several steps. First of all, we have to do the necessary tube warping, base and pile, and then put them on the loom, as you see in the first image. And this involves setting up the vertical threads that will form the foundation of the carpet and the threads that will be the pile of the carpet. Done it, we have to create an opening in the base warp yarns by raising some of them and lowering others. This creates a space for the weft yarn to be inserted by the shuttle or other devices. The weft yarn is then pushed tightly against the previous woven row of yarns using a comb-like like, comb -like tool called a reed. In this way, the web threads are woven through the warp threads and then will be create our basic fabric. The pile warp yarn are being released from the warp bin at a controlled quality and rate to maintain proper tension. The pile warp will be so inserted using a needle with different dimension to obtain asked pile height. By changing the needles, you can create a variety of rugs with different construction. The woven carpet is then wound into roll and it is produced and ready for the finishing process. Uh, now we can see a, a video where we show how a loom works. Here there is the insertion of the weft and uh, of the needles too. Okay, uh, let's now talking about tufted carpets. Tufting refers to the process of inserting tuft of yarn into a baking cloth with a needle. The tufting doesn't need the warping operation because the threads that will be tufted Tufted are charged in bobbins on acrylics in the back of the loom. Tufting machine has hundreds of needles and in each of them a thread passes through. Every needle fix the yarn into the primary working like a sweet sewing machine. As you can see, we have the pile yarns coming from the up of the loom and the baking clothes in the lower part of the loom. And uh, this is the back of this kind of loom. In the other image, we can see the front of the tufted machine where there is already a tufted carpet and the needles that do this work. Uh, you can see the detail of the needles. In every needle, there is a yarn. And this is a little uh, short videos that explain 
how um, the needles works and uh, which is the uh, time of producing this kind of carpet that it's very different from the other one with the loom. With, uh, we made our um, tufted carpets allows different construction. We can have loop pile, cut pile, or cut and loop pile. Uh, this is a little scheme of uh, tufting carpets, which the details of how the um, sorry how the needle works. Um, loop pile. Also known as a cut pile or barber pile, loop pile leaves the entire yarn loop intact on the surface of the piece. These carpets tend to be highly durable, easy to clean, and resistant to stain, making them perfect for high traffic commercial application or high traffic family areas, such as recreation room. Loop pile carpets also don't show indentations caused by footprints and vacuum marks. Next uh, slide, please. The loop pile is the uh, lower one. And uh, you can see how the loop is attached to the primary baking. Uh, cut pile is the upper uh, image, is a style of carpet where the exposed fiber are sheared off. This typically produce soft, inviting, easy to clean carpets. Different styles can be created by changing the angle of the shearing that size of the loop, or by using different treatments on the thread before the, and after it is inserted into the baking. Cut pile comes in different lengths and thicknesses. On the downsides, cut pile makes it, make it easier to see foot marks and vacuum trails. This tendency can be reduced by the twist of the fiber. The individual fibers contain a twist that helps the carpet stand up against crushing. The heavier the twist, the more resistance the carpet will be to the crushing. Heavy twist also helps create texture and dye spray, wear and dirt. Although much more popular than loop pile carpet, cut pile carpets are not as durable and will need to be replaced more often. Finishing process. Uh, once the weaving uh, or the tufting complete is complete, the carpet is removed from the loom and goes to the finishing process. This can involve trimming the pile, washing and drying the carpet and adding any necessary baking or edging. Uh, for the dyeing process, there are several common techniques of rug and carpet dyeing. In general, yarn can be dyed before it is inserted into the baking or after that, when it is already a part of unfinished carpet or rug. Yarn dyeing is the first method of dyeing. Um, sometimes it's called pre-dyeing, and uh, in this way, the color is applied to the yarn prior to the weaving or tufting. When we use synthetic yarns, we can do a solution dyeing and stock dyeing. In the former, a color pigment is added to the polymer from which yarn fiber are extruded. In this way, color becomes an inherent part of the fiber. The advantage of, of uh, all yarn dyeing methods include good side-by-side -side color consistency, large lot size, and uniformity. We have also the carpet dyeing, and this method, um, there are uh, lots of uh, methods of carpet dyeing. Uh, the one used, uh, sorry, can you come back to the last slide? Thanks. Um, the, the first technique uh, called uh, batch dyeing involves stitching the end of the carpet together and then running the tufted carpet loops through the large vats of dye and water for several hours. The batch dyeing process is ideal for smaller production runs and heavier face weight products. Continuous dyeing is a similar process to, bus, to batch dyeing, but it applies the color directly to the carpet face. Carpet is passed through a series of rollers that apply the dye to the fabric continuously. 
We can also print the carpet. And uh, this is a process of printing design uh, or patterns on carpet using printed screen, roller, inkjet, or digital technology. It is an excellent choice because it allows the maximum personalization of the design and the full color printing, and which ensures supreme accuracy of the design. Uh, we can see the ink printing in this image. And this is the machine we have uh, in Radici. And uh, with this machine, as you can see, the semi-finished carpet comes into the printing machine. And uh, in this case, uh, we have only three or four colors, but we can uh, obtain more than more colors, uh, I think 16 in total. And uh, we can pass many times on the same uh, meters to give the right colors and uh, consistency to the colors. Uh, after dyeing or printing, carpets need another process, and it is shearing. Uh, shearing carpet is a process of trimming the carpet fibers to a uniform height. This process can be done more than one time using imposite blades, and these remove all of the little loose hand and projecting fibers that might have been created during the tufting and the dyeing processes. It also helps achieve the yarn's tip definition for better results in terms of pattern and colors and of the finished carpet. As you see, there is a rotating blade that uh, is uh, applied to uh, uh, I think is uh, what uh, Ilaria called uh, blade, blade uh, some, something she said before. But uh, uh, you can see that the blade will rotate and uh, it gives a regular appearance after shearing. And uh, we use uh, to do it sometimes after printing or after um, dyeing the carpets, just to give a, a better aspect to the finished carpet. And it's necessary to do this after the printing of the carpet or after the dyeing, because the operation um, often gives a, a not good uh, appearance uh, to the carpet. Um, at this point of our uh, process, uh, we need to laminate the carpet with a secondary baking, because the carpet uh, is consisting of, of uh, an upper layer of pile attached to the baking layer, layer called secondary. This process is typically a single production line that completes the final stage of the carpet construction. Next one, please. Uh, in the finishing process, finishing process, a sticking coating powder, films, latex, etc., it's applied to both the primary baking with it or tufted and also to the secondary baking. Secondary baking can be made of different materials, woven or not woven, natural or synthetic. The two parts are then squeezed together in a large heated roll. Then they are held firmly together for several meters, passing through ovens where the temperature and the time of staying, depending on the type of fibers and product weight, to preserve the carpet shape. For uh, the Sunrise project, we will use RIPUV in this part of the carpet production by using a latex, a latex uh, formulated with RIPUV. We hope to be able to achieve uh, good results thanks to its adhesive properties and its flexibility. Finally, uh, each carpet is carefully inspected for color uniformity and other manufacturing defects before it is rolled, wrapped, and shipped. And so uh, this is our story on how carpet is made. And uh, I hope that uh, the information uh, we have featured here leads you to a better understanding of how this beautiful and versatile product is created. Many thanks to everyone for the attention.
Thank you so much, Simona, for the nice presentation. Uh, I cannot see any uh, questions in the chat. So uh, thanks to everybody to attend uh, to this uh, webinar. Uh, and I want to tell you about the next webinars, uh, which is uh, in spring 2024. that uh, I can share to you the, so uh, the next webinars to be marked is in spring 2024, different applications of polymers in energy storage devices. Uh, and the next ones will be in autumn 2024 uh, about how to carry out a life cycle uh, assessment, uh, the case a study of PVB. So we will be happy uh, to see you again uh, in the next uh, webinars. Thank you so much for your attendance.